share. Um, we, we have a, a sense of playing with toys and the amusement park is a target rich environment uh, for, for examining the physical properties of toys. I had a unique uh, opportunity the past uh, two summers to do a um, special course for rising high school juniors and seniors for college credit. Uh, as special topics course so I was given a lot of latitude I made it an algebra based course in the physics of thrills and uh, had a lot of opportunity for having the students do hands-on work with simulations to kind of uh, allow them to explore uh, the physical features that went into making a ride experience uh, with these simulations of course very simple compared to a real ride uh, students are often tasked with uh, the idea of make it the most exciting ride you can without killing the riders. Uh, and often we would have this set up as, as a challenge and we'd have the different groups uh, of students uh, uh, compete for uh, what made the most exciting ride experience. And sometimes this turned into a debate about Or what is it that made the ride a uh, uh, ride experience uh, exciting? So, uh, with this unique opportunity, I uh, got to do a lot of different things, uh, but I had in the back of my mind that these topics play in a regular physics curriculum. Uh, and so, while, while less opportunities are there to play in the normal physics curriculum, some of these tasks. Uh, could be easily ported to a, a general physics curriculum. And uh, with some surgery of the regular curriculum, uh, uh, insert some of these activities, uh, particularly later in the semester when the students have a, a, a better framework and they can move through some of these tasks a little quicker. Uh, the simulations uh, that I built that I also bit built some curriculum materials about involve things like elevator rides, the, the most famous being, if you've ever been to Disney, the Tower of Terror. Uh, uh, everybody should be familiar with the, uh, the ship swing ride. Um, very simple circular motion pendulum type ride. Uh, roller coasters are through every amusement park. Uh, getting outside the amusement park a little bit is the, the bungee jump. Uh, and then I also did some uh, Basic mechanics, uh, simple circular motion rides can uh, vary from a merry-go-round to some of these high-speed rides, uh, high G-force rides that you'll find, uh, uh, such as at Hershey Park. Um, there's one that's involved a lot of music to add to the atmosphere, but you feel yourself being thrown out of the cart as it spins around the track at high speed. Uh, Merry Mixer is another circular motion ride, but it also... Uh, adds a, 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 a two orbit motion. So it's a looking at a little more complicated uh, motion and uh, kind of a traditional swing ride. So that's the list of simulations that I built. I don't think I have time to talk about all of them, but uh, hopefully talk about uh, the most fun ones. Uh, the first uh, simulation I'll talk about is the elevator ride simulation. Uh, if you'd like to play along, there is a link in the notes section which opens up to a uh, oh, I grabbed the wrong window. There we go. Uh, it's a page I put together uh, 
basically to share these materials to other We're, we're here. Students. We're working on it. Um, uh, it has links to curriculum materials. So we're getting it back up as soon as we can. Stuff, but more so this is Julie. I'm in the room with Mike. Uh, for each one of these simulations, Mike's there's machine a link to up. the Java <laughs> app. I don't know whether it's so Java's problem, along. the Adobe. So if you wanted to play with She the... wrote, long live Adobe Connect. <laughs> I was playing with this for hours the other day when I was playing with your test room. Well, like I said, um, maybe I found I've had better luck sharing the desktop rather than trying to share specific windows. You can see if that makes a difference, maybe. I had no problem. Okay, we'll try that. Okay. We're almost back in business. Yeah. Hey, I think I'm back. All right, am I back live? Okay, can you hear me? All right, so I'm hoping uh, I'll have no more further technology problems. If you've got the link, uh, there's lots of excellent toys, as long as you can run Java. Uh, so diving into the elevator ride. Uh, motivated primarily by Disney's Tower of Terror, although there's lots of variations on elevator rides. Um, some zero-g experience uh, rides, uh, a lot of speculation, everybody's seen exciting elevator rides in movies. So uh, this particular applet allows students to explore concepts in, L -acceler in acceleration, free fall, and the notion of g-forces. And before we uh, hit upon this particular uh, applet, they uh, have some reading, talk about what G-forces are survivable, what zero G means, basically free fall. 
Uh, and then I turn them loose on the, the ride. And what they get to do is they get to edit the path in time. That is, the height is a function of time. Uh, they can refine the ride by increasing the number of control points. So they can sketch out with just like five or six the basic structure of the ride experience and then add a lot of control points so they can put in there lots of bashing up and down uh, for the exciting ride experience. Maximum height of the ride and the ride duration. Uh, before they actually hit their competition to uh, design the most exciting ride experience and to justify that, of which the all the teams are judging each other, and I am the final arbiter. Uh, they have a couple of exercises where they have to produce a zero G experience. They have to produce a high G experience, so they get a feel for the types of motion that will create these ride experiences. And let me just kind of. pop up this applet locally. Um, as a teacher who's sharing stuff, I like to share as much pedagogical materials as well. So when I open the applet, it also uh, uh, opens up some, uh, some external links and some uh, uh, tutorials, simple uh, tasks for the students to play with. Now, one of the things I did notice is uh, doing this full screen that it's not quite the same resolution. It's a little tougher to see uh, the path. But the idea here is probably the most important thing is this This is a ride right now. The default is 3 meters, 12 feet. That's not much of an elevator ride. Uh, so one of the things we like to do is maybe max out the travel that this, the rider will experience. Uh, we talk about Tower of Terror quite a bit. So we introduce the idea if we start off and sneak the ride to the top. For our unsuspecting victims without much acceleration whatsoever. And then once they're at the top, what a typical student will do, add some control points. That's what I, I call thrashing the poor rider. And since we don't really want this to last uh, 56 seconds, I'll crank this back down, 26 second ride, and it will look choppy on your video, but if you play with it yourself, you'll see a nice, slow, unsuspecting ride on up to the top. There's hardly any acceleration, then the window's open, and we plummet to the ground, and we bounce them up and down a few times. Uh, which is all very well and good, lots of variation in g-forces, but one of the things that students are responsible for is making sure that their riders uh, don't die. So if we have high negative g-forces, uh, riders are bouncing off the ceiling, so the students have to identify in their thrilling survivable ride uh, that special equipment might be needed. So um, these are basically the considerations uh, that the students have is they design their ride experience. Um, they have to make sure they're familiar with the idea of free fall, uh, feeling your lunch getting loose in the elevator uh, ride, light in the stomach. Uh, that would that makes a, a lot of ride experiences like roller coasters cresting a hill. Uh, it's part of the thrilling experience as opposed, and in contrast with that, high G forces. Uh, they have to be aware of uh, what would be high, dangerous, or fatal accelerations, and uh, would a G uh, suit be necessary, such as a fighter pilot would wear, or would just being a safety belt on a seat be sufficient? Uh, a lot of students have had the chance to play with Roller Coaster Tycoon, uh, so they're familiar with making overly thrilling rides. Uh, so that's the uh, elevator ride. Uh, they also have a set of... Uh, Discussion uh, questions that they ask as part of uh, their out, uh, their breakout sessions, uh, which basically helps them qualify their final ride experience design. Uh, and one of the things that you can do with the, this particular type of applet is you can save the state. That is, if they have a, a experience that they they're 
uh, really fond of, they want to make that their, their bid for the most uh, exciting state, you can right click on the app, save the state of the app, take that file to another computer so that we can all play it on the, the podium so that the students can compare uh, their, ride, their group's ride experience with those developed by other groups so we can have our competition. All right, uh, next app that I'll talk about is uh, more play, less competition, but it's the pirate ship ride. This is uh, it's a bit of a learning experience for me as well because uh, there's always a perception there's a best seat on the ride. So uh, in addition to, work, to working with basic physical principles, we had uh, uh, a, basically a discussion and a, and a vote on, well, what's the best seat? and the ride and why. And one of the comments was, well, you sit in the middle for the highest G-forces or you sit at the ends for the highest G-forces. And it turns out we can test that. We uh, have the G-forces uh, on the front, back, and middle positions. And it turns out the students are quite surprised, as I was, on the simulation. And the, uh, as far as the G-forces go, uh, those, are, those experiences are virtually identical, just a slight variation. But the visceral experience of sitting in the back seat, the left side seat, when it rises highest to the left, uh, is quite different than sitting in the middle because you're looking almost straight down. Now, students are always able to turn any simulation into a competition. And in playing with this particular simulation, usually uh, the competition turns out to be who can make it do a loop the first. And yes, it is possible to make this simulation have the swing ride go completely around. Uh, I have a roller coaster app. This is actually something I developed some years ago. It's a 2D roller coaster with an editable track. Uh, you can add friction. There's lots of areas in physics we can explore with this. But again, it's a matter of uh, creating a an exciting uh ride that's survivable. We can track things like g-forces, uh, negative g-forces, uh, and the students get to decide whether they're going to kill their riders by having the blood rush to their head with a high negative g. Um, the bungee jump is uh, one of, it's basically my favorite of the group. It's not the amusement park ride. It allows us though to explore something that's definitely thrilling and since I'm uh, afraid of heights it's not something I would ever do personally uh, but it also gave us a chance to do some modeling so what we have and I'm going to bring up this applet I have a slightly different version here than is on the website uh, I grabbed the copies from the uh, open source physics repository for the, for putting on the website so uh, some of the background calls will look a little different but here's your basic bungee jumper. All right, he's being dropped. You get to set things like the height of the bungee jump, the uh, the stiffness of the cord. The higher the spring constant, the stiffer the cord. Uh, the length of the drop and the mass of the rider. And if we just go with the defaults, uh, of course, bad things can happen. And of course, teaching high school students, I had to limit the amount of gore. Uh, so I made this definitely uh, maybe rated PG. The uh, goal was basically, again, uh, design, design a survivable ride experience for a reasonable range of uh, human beings. Uh, but we also turned this into a, a, a different kind of simulation and competition. We did a Barbie bungee jump. We used rubber bands as a bungee cord. Unfortunately, that's okay. Um, we used rubber bands as a bungee cord. We had Barbies that uh, the students brought in. Uh, they had to measure the mass of the Barbie. They measured the physical characteristics of the rubber band bungee cord that they basically put together by tying uh, rubber bands together. Uh, they used a modified version of the simulation to. Uh, model what their Barbie was going to do and they had to decide how much bungee cord they were going to use and the competition was whose Barbie was going to get closest to the ground without hitting. 
uh, the students really seem to get into this. Uh, we took a day to scout out sites, so we're looking for uh, good places on campus to do our bungee jump. We made some measurements uh, using photo analysis uh, to, to get our measurements of what the height the drop could potentially be. Uh, and then we spent a couple hours in the lab where the students modeled uh, modeled the, the rubber band for uh, characteristics for a particular length that they decided they were going to go with a longer rubber band. They went back and remodeled it to see if it was safe or not. So it was a, an iterative design process. And then we all got to go out the next day, fortunately no rain, and uh, do all our Barbie drops. Uh, one of the fun things that I was not sure what happened, having never tried this before, was that uh, in the simulation we really didn't account for any friction. And it turns out friction is not really ignorable, so everybody's Barbie was safe, no matter how close to the ground they, they went. Barbie lost enough speed as the uh, bungee cord untangled uh, that she didn't drop too far. So it was uh, a safety feature none of us had anticipated. Um, just going to uh, quickly mention uh, a few more of the rides. Uh, we have a merry-go-round ride, uh, and it's a 3D simulation. First of all, I want to point out that doing interactive 3D stuff, uh, particularly in Java, is hard, particularly for uh, reasonable update rates and sophisticated graphics. So in this ride model, uh, the riders are represented by spherical objects and of course everybody's got to if they, if they know a physicist they've got to joke about uh, what a, a physicist will assume something is a sphere even though that's a hardly a, a good description anyway the uh, simple ride just exploring ride considerations and what does it take to make uh, an object that goes in a circular motion have any sort of a thrill and the key is the acceleration now the way this is modeled is that the, the arms of the uh, the ride in the simulation, you can change them as well as the rotation rate. So you can make the distance uh, around the pivot longer or shorter, which is dangerous because uh, knowing typical students, one way you can get uh, large accelerations is to just grab the controls and thrash them back and forth. Uh, which isn't the type of ride experience I was looking for. So what I had to do in the simulation in, in anticipation of that is essentially throttle, uh, making it a slow pneumatic expansion, if you will, uh, for the radius of rotation rather than allowing them to generate high Gs just by the swing out and back and forth rather than the uh, circular motion. Uh, this is a snapshot of the... Uh, Easy Java Simulation Toolkit that I use to build the simulations. Uh, and basically the, the, the key as far as the physicist in me is concerned uh, for building these things is uh, two part. First is the dynamics, which is the evolution page. And uh, of course the uh, second part is going to be the presentation, which would be the elements page. But uh, this kind of shows you how you can so set up some pretty neat uh, complicated differential equations. Uh, and not have to know anything more than those differential equations. Don't have to worry about the numerical methods behind it because the toolkit has all that built in. Uh, it's a basically a pretty cool calculator for simulating things. Uh, so this is uh, basically an overview slide of the tools I use to build the simulations. I'm heavy into open source. Uh, the open source physics uh, project is uh, incorporated in the uh, uh, National Digital Science Library uh, physics education branch, and I've managed to have several applets uh, uh, included in their archives. And the toolkit that actually comes is available through that organization is the Easy Java Simulations Toolkit. Uh, some other open source things that I use to help. Uh, build the graphics. I use a program called Pavre. It's a ray tracer to make things like my bungee jumping dummy or the roller coaster car. And GIMP is used. It's a it's a, a poor cheap man's Photoshop. I use that to basically uh, manipulate some images uh, to make them work better with uh, the Easy Java simulations uh, uh, as far as uh, displaying the, the motion and the objects.
Uh, last couple slides are just uh, mentioning a couple of the other uh, simulations uh, of the Mary Mixer, uh, which is combining two rotational motions. Uh, here again, uh, the students can have a little more latitude in designing an exciting ride. Uh, basically, there's two types of rotations. There's the main rotation, the main arms, and then there's a, a, a inner rotation. And the fun part about this is you can have the inner rotation be in a different, the opposite direction of the main rotation. And students can look at that and see how that uh, change up and the mixture of the, those two rotation rates can lead to a different kind of ride experience. Is it going to be smooth? Is it going to be choppy? A lot of changes in the acceleration tend to lead to a, a an, at least in their perspective as riders, uh, more exciting ride. Uh, this is a kind of uh, just a quick list of the kind of discussion questions we'd have on the Mary Mixer. Uh, again, G-forces are key. Um, is it possible to get a steady G-force? Uh, and is that an exciting ride? Uh, usually what, what I find is when students present their ride experience, uh, how they're going to operate the controls for their uh, for their passengers, uh, very few pick a steady G-force for their exciting ride. Even though they might get higher G-forces overall, that's not the main aspect of the experience. Uh, the swing ride, this is uh, uh, kind of a last stop in terms of the simulation. Uh, has uh, more physics in it. Uh, has basically, it's, it's, it's mechanically modeled as basically a, uh, an elastic cord uh, and swing arms rotating, uh, somewhat reminiscent of a typical swing ride where you have dozens of swings hanging from uh, a rotating mechanism, lifts up, rotates all the swings around, and the rotating arm tilts. So they can explore most of this kind of uh, motions and monitor what happens to the, uh, uh, the, the g-forces that the rider feels depending upon what ride parameters they select. All right, so that's pretty much all I had in terms of the presentation. Um, do I have any questions? Are there any questions here? OK, why did you choose to use Java? Is it just for the, the toolboxes and the libraries that are available. Okay. The interactive tools, some like web-based language that you could do this in as well. Uh, I was basically uh, I, I I program to a limited extent. I had tried to play with Java here and there. I tried other things for developing simulations. Uh, also, in my history, I've been both a Mac person and a PC person. I also do stuff in Linux. So having things available on a lot of platforms has become important to me. And I wasn't getting very far because I, I needed to do a lot of background stuff uh, to get even a simple simulation to work. And then I found out about this easy Java simulation from the Open Source Physics Project. I went to one of their very first workshops and uh, it just opened up a, a whole lot of opportunities. It has the built-in math and a lot of things that make it easier to do the graphics. As, uh, in particular, things like push buttons and sliders and, and all the housekeeping stuff uh, as very point and click using easy Java simulations. Now, what I see on the horizon is uh, all the browsers going away from Java and more towards HTML5. And the, the chief... Uh, Components the people who, who basically run easy Java simulations uh, are looking at uh, tools to port that source code into an HTML format. So I'm hoping I can still be relevant even as Java seems to fade into the background. Thank you. I had a question. <clears throat> Do you have any data um, regarding? Um, whether students perform differently on exams or problem sets um, using the simulations no, versus I, a traditional course? No, I would, I would love to have uh, pre- and post-test uh, data for assessing learning gains. 
the difficulty is I've always been cursed and blessed with uh, small class sizes. Uh, when I go to my physics education conferences, I'm the guy who's at the small campus with 20, 30 students, and I'm looking at colleagues presenting data sets on thousands of students with just a couple things being varied. So I found it very difficult to try to do pre and post, uh, ass you know, formal pre and post uh, uh, type assessment. Uh, so my answer to that is basically, I'm sorry, no. For the group. Uh, is anyone seeing how something like this could be adapted for coursely teaching? Other than a physics course. <laughs> uh, I think one of the things that struck me was that in a physics course, you can have people crash and die. And... No one actually crashes and dies, <laughs> but you learn a lot that way. Well, that's a very good question I have, though, and that is how you how you approach how you have your students approach using the simulations. What upfront things do you cover before they go into it? Do you give them? I, I take it you give them a specific things you want them to accomplish, and so that's one question. Then my, my second question is when you observe your students using these simulations. How methodical are they going through and using them? Do they just try things willy-nilly? Do they go through and vary one thing at a time? So on. Um, the, I, I do some preliminary lecture before we hit a particular simulation. Uh, and what I've shown you, I've kind of shown out of sequence. Uh, the elevator ride would be a nice first uh, simulation. It's one-dimensional motion. So we talk about acceleration, we talk about the effect of gravity, and we talk about g-forces, and we do talk about physiological limits uh, the human body has when subject to g-forces. Uh, so the, And then we also talk about graphical relationships, the relationship between uh, a graph of position, velocity, and acceleration. And so by drawing, by changing the drawing of position versus time, they're, they're uh, uh, indirectly manipulating acceleration versus time. So there's there's some kinematic topics I'm trying to get them to reinforce, uh, but I'm trying not to make this uh, too guided, uh, which why it played a little better for a special topics course than it would for um, say physics 211, which is uh, heavily oriented towards engineering students, which have uh, uh, less time to play and uh, more time to analyze. So uh, where I've used it, uh, it's it's not been heavily guided. But again, because I have small class sizes, uh, when they start getting off and just playing willy-nilly, I do have the, the opportunity to be right there and guide them back on track. Yeah, in fact, I noticed that someone made a comment before leaving that she thought it was a Good example of problem-based learning. The uh, I think the best example of that is the bungee cord because they had a physical problem rather than a math problem, and uh, they had to incorporate data that they had to go and measure in the lab and project with the aid of the simulation. Uh, uh, um, had to predict uh, how it would perform out in the field. What type of reflective activities do you do after the simulations are over? People have the results and so on. Uh, not a whole lot that was formal. We did have um, would have quizzes and tests, and the, the I, I would have web-based quizzes for these students with the understanding that they would talk to each other and to me as much as possible. They were low-stakes quizzes, so they were they're basically encouraging them to to take the time to to think about the specific points. Um, 
intuitively, I would say that that gave them an opportunity to to see how the simulations and we also had field trips to the amusement parks, how those experience played into the algebraic description of uh, the, the basically the, 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 the physics aspect uh, touch base on how the uh, problems that they had to do basic calculation on were, were tied in with the, uh, the experiences they had and the more open-ended uh, stuff like the simulations and the measurements they made at the, at the amusement parks. But not, nothing, not a real formal uh, reflection. Are there any other questions? So do you have a way to capture the, the data uh, and analyze them? By which I mean, you know, the students are playing with them, um, everybody's playing maybe a little differently. And uh, um, how can you look at the people's uh, learning patterns? It is possible in principle to have them save the state of the simulations. Um, at intermediate times, I do have their final product, but it's it's I don't have a good way besides monitoring the classroom myself to see uh, how they're building up to their final product. So it, it would be nice to see if one group is uh, or, or most groups are primarily playing with the uh, the for example the elevator ride. Uh, primarily playing with controlling the path uh, while others might be uh, inspired and, and, and see that they can change the acceleration by changing the, the overall length of the ride. By shortening the length of the ride, the accelerations become greater. I don't have a good way of getting that data, but I can see how that'd be, uh, you know, good feedback for me as an instructor. I think you have to overlay some type of learning analytics into the job of yeah. You don't know if there's yeah. necessarily a solution for Well, I mean, you know, uh, at uh, the uh, Pittsburgh, the, there's a Pittsburgh Science and Learning Center. Uh, they actually, they also teach physics uh, compared with the learning math and uh, language, which is Chinese. Uh, and they do have a huge data shop uh, that, uh, uh, that's a repository of all the learning behavior. It's basically stroke level data. And they also developed the tools to mine this data. Uh, and I think that kind of uh, data will be very informative and useful uh, to the inspector as well as to the researcher. That would be well beyond my capabilities. And I th think it would take some significant additional software on the computers that the students were uh, using during these, uh, these exercises. Yeah, you probably have to do a combination of screen capture and video capture. Okay, let's, let's when you actually load a lot of stuff into the job that's sort of there. Yeah. Cool. I'll work. Anything else? Uh, well, thanks for presenting. Um, we, you didn't hear us laugh, but we definitely enjoyed everyone crashing and burning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So we were talking about about your computer. We we're talking about the uh, the bungee jump. The Barbies hit the, hit their heads. And, oh, oh, yeah, you need oh, to okay. Close-ups of the Barbies next time. Right. <laughs> The uh, yeah, I uh, I, I had a student a couple of years ago. Sorry, I, I, I had a student. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I had a student a couple of years ago who, as part of a project, uh, do work on a simulation, and he decided that with projectile motion it would be real fun. So he added uh, some graphics for the explosion and the flames. Uh, I was waiting for him to add the sound effects, but he never got quite that far. I was thinking you should have a picture of a horrified can right after Barbie gets. <laughs> <laughs>
So you could use G.I. Joe, but he would just rappel down the wall. Yeah. He wouldn't bunge you. So. Uh. I think so, we're going to sign off okay. <laughs> and stop the recording. Yeah, thank you. That, uh, that was really interesting. Let me let me just say it, it's been a lot of fun to do these simulations and to work with the students on this. Um, I like to do a lot of weird side projects with my students, and uh, this has been one of the more fruitful sets of projects.